Um, I'm going to give an overview of my presentation. I want to talk about whether you can, in fact, talk about the health of a population and whether that is different from the health of all the individuals in the population. I then want to talk about the equity efficiency trade-off. I think that the equity efficiency trade-off is a fallacy, and I'll explain why. And I then want to talk about the sustainability agenda, because sustainability is now rock solid on the agenda, and then that has implications for population health and for equity in population health. I'm going to present you with a series of, uh, of thought experiments. And you need to think about where you lie on this thought experiment, because not everyone will agree about where they lie. But generally, I'm going to use some sort of metric of, of health. I'll use life expectancy, because it's kind of convenient and then some fake distribution of health. So imagine you've got two populations with their health distributed in different ways. If you were a straight epidemiologist, you'd look at the average health of the population, and the average health in this case is just sort of where it lies in the center. So you can see that the average health of the two populations are slightly different, but they're identically distributed. So there's no distributional issues, there's just one population is on average healthier than the other population. In contrast, this is a population of two populations where they both have exactly the same average health, they both have their peaks at the same point, but distributionally they're quite different. One population, you're much more likely to die younger, but you're also much more likely to live into older age, and in the other population you're just much more likely to sort of have the, the central point of, of life, but you won't live as long as in the first population, and you won't die as young as in the first population. And do you have a sense about which you'd rather be born into? John Rawls, the, the, the moral economist, spent a lot of time having these thought experiments about, you know, in a, in, in a veil of ignorance, where would you rather be, be? And you need to think about, in a veil of ignorance, not knowing what you know now, if you were to be reborn into a population, which population would you rather be born into? Let's move away from these, these broadly distributed populations and take really absurd populations, because they sharpen the thinking. So we'll have two populations. In one population, in the blue, half the population will die within the first year of birth, and half the population will live to 100. And in the other one, everyone lives to 50, and then they die. So you've got two choices in this population, but they both have exactly the same average life expectancy. So for, a, for a, a, an epidemiologist, you say, oh, average life expectancy is 50. Both populations, they're the same. They're equally healthy. Do you have a preference? Would you rather be born into one or the other? Can I get a quick show of hands? Who would rather be born into the blue population? You'd rather have the, the probability, or the possibility of a long life, but the possibility of death. Fair enough. And I think it's interesting. And who would rather be born into the pink population? And apparently most people would rather not be born. <laughs> But what's interesting is that there's variation in, in where you would rather be, and therefore it raises interesting questions about what you want out of a population and the health of a population and the distribution of health in a population. Within the health of the populations, there's this idea of an equity efficiency trade-off. Efficiency is a very human idea. You create a car engine, if you want to cook eggs on your car engine, it's not particularly efficient, but it's really good at driving, but it depends what the purpose of the thing was that you created it for. So when we talk about a health efficiency trade-off, what, what they mean when they talk about a health efficiency trade-off is they mean that you might get more health in the population for a given dollar input, but it won't necessarily be distributed well. The rich will do really well out of it, but the poor will not do so well out of it. And then they talk about this trade-off in terms of, well, if you want the poor to do well, then obviously the total gains in the population won't be as high. But it depends what you want out of your health in the population. Do you want it to be distributed in one way? Do you want your population to look like this thing where some people could die very young, but some people could live to very old? Or do you want it where everyone kind of lives to in the middle? And how you want your population to look will depend how you distribute your resources in your population and therefore what your view of equity is. And I think there's a fallacy in the equity efficiency trade-off because the equity efficiency trade-off says that you're trading off equity and efficiency. You're not trading off equity and efficiency. You're trading off health gains and equity. 
Your choice is whether you want lots and lots of health gains for some people or equity, but not necessarily lots and health, lots of health gains just for some people. And that's where the true trade-off lies, not in the efficiency. You can achieve an equitable distribution in your population efficiently, but you have to decide that that's what you want. There's an interesting problem in the way the world health life expectancy is distributed. And here what you've got along here is the amount of resources used by each of the countries. And on the y-axis, you have their average life expectancy. So you can see in the red, these are countries that use a lot of the world's resources and have wonderful life expectancy. And in the blue, you have variation. Some, all of the countries use few of the world's resources but some of them have very high life expectancy, or relatively high life expectancy, and some of them have very low life expectancy. There's a line on the left, which is left, yes, left, which is in the gold, and that line is the line that is estimated to be a sustainable level of resource consumption in the population. And if you look at that line, what you see is that the life expectancy we could sustainably imagine over the long term is in that 65 to 70 years of life, not 80, 85, which these high-income countries are enjoying. This again raises interesting questions about distribution and equity. I think the challenge for a, for a state like Kerala, for a country like India, is where you want to lie in the world in terms of the global consumption, because you need fair access to the world's global resources. You don't just want to sit at the bottom and watch everyone else use it all. And you also have to have some sense of what is sustainable into the future. And I think those are the real challenges that are going to face populations into the future. Thank you very much.